welcome back to African Voices TV. Today we are talking all things Rwanda and commemorating the 25th anniversary of the genocide. And as just before we went off for the break, we were speaking to Enoch, who was responding to a question from Bailo on how he sees himself as a Rwandan and how he thinks the world perceives that. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, going back to that question, people, you know, you mentioned Rwanda, you know, for, to someone, you know, or whatever comes up to the mind is a genocide. Mm. You know, it's something that is so big in people's understanding of what happened, you know, 25 years ago. Uh, to me, I stand proud, you know, and it's something that every time I look back where we are as a country, you know, where the countries come from, mm. you know, there's not really anything that would stop anyone from being random, you know. Mm. And there's even, you know, foreigners that would probably be happy to be randoms, you know. Um, mm. Um, many foreigners live in Rwanda, you know, they love the country. They've seen what an actual um, definition of development and progress, you know, a country such as Rwanda has gotten to, you know, in 25 years. Absolutely. Which, you know, there's so many um, countries around Africa that in 30, 40 years, they're still where they are. I think I, I would totally see that too. You know, I would you know, see that they're too. They're still <laughs> where in 25 years, you know, yeah. we give credit, you know, to our president, you know, what he's yeah. done, what he's achieved. And obviously and there are people around him. He doesn't work alone. Oh, he yeah, absolutely. People around and, him. And yeah. one of those being you guys, Rwanda has actually got the biggest uh, um, um, uh, percentage of, mem um, of women members of parliament Definitely. across the world. So that's about... 60% now, mm -hmm. it used to be about 50, and now we've actually gone into the 60% mm. mm. range. So still doing really, really well. Absolutely. Um, what do you think? Do you think the women who are in parliament are actually decision makers, or are they just policy enactors? They make decisions. Do they inform they policy? Work on do ground. they make policy? They work on ground. Do they know. make policy? Absolutely. We know what influence women can have, you know, mm -hmm. in development. Yes. And uh, who else will be best, you know, better be placed in a position of development of a country? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, women are the best actors. Absolutely. You know. I agree. They act upon, <laughs> you know, they <laughs> act upon. <laughs> <laughs> They act upon, you know, all these policies, you know, they implement, they drive it, mm. you know, they drive them. Mm -hmm. And that's where we are in terms mm. of development. Mm -hmm. If you look, um, the, the empowerment of women in Rwanda, you yeah. know, is just absolutely over the roof, you know, compared, you know, to some of the African countries around, mm. you know. Um, Rwanda is a model country, you know, when it comes to women empowerment. So having 60% mm -hmm. of women in parliament, mm -hmm. where else in the whole world have you Nowhere, got nowhere actually. Um, but I, I, do, I do still have a counter concern. Not mm -hmm. that I, I, I'm not dismissive of that. I actually appreciate that is a very good statistic. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the number of women parliamentarians in Rwanda, as far as I know, does not necessarily reflect on empowerment at a domestic level. Patriarchy is still very strong at the domestic as level. As in Africa, across? Uh, uh, I'm talking about Rwanda today, so <laughs> in this particular case, um, it's not reflected at the domestic level, and so there's still there's still some strides. The policies are there, and I think the other good thing I think that came out of Rwanda that most people do not understand is because seven, there was a 77 percent survival rate of women mm -hmm. during the genocide, so it meant that a lot of the women actually needed to to hold the fort. And, 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 and keep things moving. And so that's how uh, mm. they came into leadership positions. But again, as a result of things like war, a lot of women were victims of abuse, rape, and stuff. But the policy that I definitely know was introduced by women and enacted is the policy on gender-based violence. Mm. The Rwandese women, I think, should be noted for that. People do not recognize just how instrumental they were on that mm. one. Well, um, I'm, I'm not agreeing with you there, because <laughs> if you say, um, Rwanda, they've got the highest percentage of women in parliament uh, in yes. Africa, yeah. and yet you still, being a feminist, you're still not happy with 
what the country oh, no, has I'm done. I'm absolutely happy. I'm very happy with exactly. what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Are they sitting at the table? You see, there's there's one thing about but, but wherever they sit, there's policy they, implementation. If they are in parliament, different. but if they are in parliament, <laughs> they will different. definitely be making policies. They are making policies. They will not be They're just not there. Exactly. No, 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 they will no, not be just there for numbers. They are there no, to no, drive no. development. Do, do your you. homework. Mm -hmm. Paul Kagame has got an executive mm -hmm. where the decision making lies. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that executive is actually predominantly of men. It's not a reflection of what parliament looks I like. I disagree with that. But then again, I'm also going to introduce another topic, mm -hmm. uh, another reason why I have my concerns. So mm -hmm. women can go far in Rwanda, mm -hmm. but just how far can you go? You know, there's always that thing of, I can go this far, but mm -hmm. the minute I aim to go higher, we've had two women uh, that have uh, challenged Pokagami in the last two big elections. So that was 2010 and 2017. So we had... Uh, Victoire Ingabire, this, this uh, in 2010. Yeah, that's the year that Pokagame won by 93%. In the last election, he won by 99%. Again, again uh, there, was, there was a woman contender. These women have both been imprisoned uh, uh, just after these, these elections. I feel like there's only so much that the, the regime can take, and as long as it's manageable and within control, the patriarchy still holds. I think um, when you're playing politics, you know, you've got to understand where you are, what ground you're trading on. In Rwanda in particular, you know, if I put my position to, uh, to where the president is, and from where we have come from, if it was a foreigner or an outsider that came to my country, you know, to play such politics of divisions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These contenders you're talking about didn't come to play on a fair ground. They had their own agenda, they had their own policies that, was, that wasn't in well, line with what... their own agenda. What as in, you, you know, the politics they were trying to implement or play, mm -hmm. you know, uh, put forward to the citizens, mm -hmm. was not the politics that... Would you say it's the politics of divide and rule? Div, div, no, no, divisions, not even like the divide and rule is only from the colonialists. Okay. But uh, implementing what the previous uh, uh, governments had been doing. So okay. You're trying to tell me why they were imprisoned. I'm trying to understand no, no, where you're going with this. Uh, I mean, if you look at, uh, you know, the whole dynamics, you know, of what this ladies stood for. I don't want it's, us to mo to no, waste no, most of our it's time not, it's talking not, about these ladies. It's not in the best interest <laughs> mm -hmm. of the country as a whole. Okay. You know, so if you're wanting to contend... Happy with the answer? You know, if you want to contend... No, I think we're going to have another whole I tell you what, because okay. at the moment... If I'm you want to contend on any... The reason why I don't want us to... Move. You've got to... Okay, we need to talk about the economy. Yeah, Let's you've got to win hearts and minds. Exactly. <laughs> you know, you've got to, you know, take away all these politics of division. Mm -hmm. So that's where... Uh, I stand in that position. Okay, okay let's I forget about the ladies that, for the moment, yeah. <laughs> because I don't want us to waste uh, all our time talking about those two women. But however, um, as much as we're not talking about those women now, Kagami has done a lot in 25 years. Mm -hmm. But obviously, he's not the only person that can do better in the country. Why is Mr. Kagami still wanting to stay in power? I think he doesn't want to stay in power because he he wants to. The people wants him to stay in power. Yeah, because, are you telling me there is no other one than that can do any better? I've never seen any. You've not tried any, have you? Personally, I haven't seen anyone have you tried that any? have come to to give a clear presentation mm -hmm. of what Kagame has done. Yeah, okay. Am I right During that to 25 think? years, do you think he should have kind of nurtured, even if it is another person, another Rwandan, mm. you know? To say, okay, what what happens when if anything happens to him now? God forbid. I mean, um, like any other political players, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. around the world, mm -hmm. if you know, there are people in the country mm -hmm. that maybe that work with him, mm. that understands, you know, um, the whole process of development politics, you know. Um, peace and security mm. Mm -hmm. within our uh, governance uh, position mm. that might be able to, you know, who knows, you know, um, aid him in terms of, you know, if he was in a run or if, if he would wanted to, you know, pass on the, mm. the position to someone else. So what would you say is do. his secret right now to, to the success that he's having? It's a collective response. In terms of the economy? It's a, uh, I think it's a collective responsibility. Mm. You know, there's people understand 
his position. Mm. He tells them where, you know, where we're heading as Rwandans. Mm. So they're able to listen to him. The reason why I'm asking that question is because looking at someone who comes from West Africa mm. or conflict countries mm. um, where there are plenty of natural resources, mm. but yet the countries are still not doing better. But looking at Rwanda comparing to like countries like Angola, countries like Mozambique, Syria, Mozambique, yeah. Liberia, mm. you know, you can count, you can continue going on. Rwanda has done... There's no corruption in Rwanda, that's to begin with. Yep. Okay. Okay. Africa has been infested with corruption. Rwanda has been a model and an example, you know. If you don't have any um, corruption within a country, mm -hmm. you very well know whatever litter you have, mm -hmm. you will utilize it. You know, you use it to uh, push your country forward. You know? I, I also think, again, with uh, as far as the development of Rwanda is mm. concerned, I, I feel what Rwanda has also done differently to to the rest of the sub-Saharan African countries, mm. I'm not very convinced with the MENA ones, but the rest of the sub-Saharan countries is, um, the Rwandan government is on top of the development agenda. So external, anyone external who wants to be part of that development agenda, either through aid or whatsoever, whatsoever means, will have to feed into what the people at yeah, the plan. grassroots say mm. they need. If the people at the grassroots say they want a school, mm. then the Rwandese government will tell whatever NGO has come into the country that if you want to participate and partner with us, mm. this is where the development is needed. I think that has really contributed. Mm. It Absolutely. means that people I are mean, being consulted. We know in, in the development Developing players, you know, we know, you know, people who come yeah. giving in aid and, you know, sorts of things. Yeah. We know what they can do to derail a mm. country off its agenda. So the country has a program of itself. So yeah. why would any external player yeah. come and dictate, you know, terms yeah. that don't match in line with what your development agenda is? Mm -hmm. you would know? you say this is all because the country started from the scratch? Absolutely. Yeah. So, like I said earlier, when you're building something from scratch, mm -hmm. You know how um, you want it to be. You know what shape you're putting that you know uh, structure into. Yeah. So you drive the agenda yeah. because that agenda is in the best interest of your own people. Yeah. So for any external actors trying to come in, yeah. dictate or implement what isn't in line with our country, yeah. then you know that is something different. So I think. Yeah. Where we are in terms of development, you know, which is absolutely, you know, high up right there, yeah. is because of the government policies in yeah. place, you know. And like I said, corruption is the biggest disease around Africa. Yeah. So when, um, when you mention like Angola or Mozambique, you know, these are wealthy, you know, rich yeah. mineral countries. Yeah. But where, where are they now? Do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So again, it's about uh, leadership, collective responsibility of its citizens, mm -hmm. you know, and all people look into the same lens of where they're heading to. Absolutely. I'll still come back to the political situation in the country. Mm -hmm. So let's say if Kagame is to resign today, mm -hmm. who do you think will be his best successor? I mean, I can't, you know, pick any names, uh, but um, I know there are people, you know, people uh, capable of doing that. And again, if you work in a country... Is there any opposition in the country? Um, yeah, yeah, you know, like any other country, you know, you've got to have an opposition. So there are uh, political parties in the country as well, mm -hmm. but they also understand, you know, the agenda, you know, the policies that are, you know, that basically are people, are in people's interest, really, mm -hmm. you know. So you can't just be an opposition mm -hmm. driving an agenda opposite words that will either destroy the people you want to lead, so you've got to have an understanding of where you want to take your people. I actually agree with the idea that an opposi opposition parties should not necessarily be there to oppose each and everything. I agree with that. I'm, 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 I'm on board with that. Um, the contention sometimes with Rwanda comes in on the point where there's such 
an iron fist in how the country is run, sure. that it's actually not, uh, people don't have confidence enough to, uh -huh. to step up and be in opposition. Um, that will be a discussion for another day because it could, it could, it could take different dimensions. Again, I'll disagree However, with that. However, I will but, say, um, I will we say, revisit in this case, some, we can yeah. revisit that, yeah. However, I will definitely say, uh, with regards to grooming and harnessing uh, the potential of other people, you asked that question mm. within this context earlier. Um, Rwanda currently is slowly going to be getting to a point where a uh, majority of the youth are actually in leadership roles. Okay. That's how it's looking. But mm. those, those are statistics that are raw at the moment, but mm. that's the direction that it's taking. So I can see a succession, I guess, maybe mm. predominantly by the patriotic front as opposed to any other policy, but there's, there's that grooming, that there, there's a leadership that's growing amongst the young people in Rwanda. I think, you know, um if you call it, you know, a leadership, uh, a leadership ground, I think it's fair for all, you mm -hmm. know, and whether there were some young people that might be coming from a different angle, mm -hmm. you know, they are there to know where they might be, uh, you know, um, driving the country towards mm -hmm. to, but it's got to be, you know, in line with what the whole population wants, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. You cannot uh, drive people backwards, you know, mm -hmm. you've got to drive them frontwards, Absolutely. you know. So, like again, you know, we, we've seen, you know, the rhetoric of African politics, mm -hmm. you know, where is there is development in place, someone who wants to take over is not in the best interest of the people. Mm -hmm. It's their, in, you know, personal it's their pockets gain, and personal gains and, and their everything. Families and but in Rwanda, the dynamics yeah. are different. Talking of that, though, uh, because we don't have much time left, um, we've seen, like recently, we've seen in Sudan, where the youth have played a key part in helping to overthrow uh, their former president, Omar al-Bashir. And uh, across Africa, the youths are highly unemployed. We've seen um, in many parts of Africa, especially like in West Africa and other parts, Mm -hmm. where many people are trying to cross the Mediterranean to come and seek a better life in Europe. Mm -hmm. You know, not, most, not much of that happening in East Africa, but I know in West Africa that has been, um, the youths are currently living in huge numbers. In, my question is, in Rwanda, do you have anything in place where you are making sure um, the youths are engaged, there's something for the youth, something that they can focus on until they finish their education. And when they have finished their education as well, there's something for them, for them to get jobs so that they don't have to leave the country. Because if you look at what happened during the genocide, you lost quite a huge number of the population in order to rebuild mm. uh, the population. Because if you hear development, development mm. is also human resources. Oh, if definitely. There's no human and resources. I mean, know, with, be without, no development. without the young population, mm. you know, the young people, mm. you know, even where we are now, mm. you know, we won't be there. The youths are the ones that, that drive this development. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, even those in schools, those in uh, employment, you yeah. know, those in other skilled, yeah. you know, uh, areas, they're all driving towards this, and everyone has the same vision as well. Yeah. So that's the most important element to bear in mind, you know, if you have a young population, you know, they've got to be in the same kind of like sack where they do understand where they're heading to. So, you know, the example of Sudan, you know, some of those people in Sudan or the young people in Sudan must have been frustrated for years and years and years. They've yeah. not known anything different. Exactly, you know, they've never they known anything else. But this. we have a young population of young people yeah. who, the only thing they've seen, you know, from 94 is progress, progress. after progress yeah. after progress mm. and development. So they have basically stood up and said, we want to head that way, mm. you know, rather than having to go opposite sides. Mm. So they're all on the same line. Mm. Mm. And that's where they're heading to. So, in the in the in the run up to the commemorations of mm. of the twenty fifth anniversary, mm. um, there was a survey amongst the youth, mm. and what they said is, I actually quoted it. So they are the majority of the population, actually, and they said they're optimistic about the future and that they are ready to forgive. They might not forget, but they're ready to forgive mm -hmm. and they have forgiven and they're focused on working for a better Rwanda. Mm -hmm. So that was what the survey, I think the results are quite high as well. In oh, terms definitely. Of I mean, if you had a youth, you know, who were sat, you know, on that sack of unforgiveness for years and years mm -hmm. and years, you know, 
that would be catastrophic. Yeah. But you know, they've got the heart, you know, the government has introduced, you know, uh, a reconciliation program, you know. Yeah. We do have, you know, the traditional course called Gachachas, mm. you know. These are, have come into play and have contributed quite a lot, you know, mm -hmm. towards, you know, uh, bringing people back to society, you know, even those people that uh, participated in the genocide mm -hmm. of uh, a million Tutsis. So all mm -hmm. these people are back in society to rebuild the country. I mean, what would you do if you had to lock away, you know, all that big population? Well, you know, we've got to get to it, less you know? than 45 seconds to go. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to ask you this final one, but briefly, what do you think the rest of Africa can learn from Rwanda? Everything. Everything. Okay. Development, reconciliation, and positive politics. Well, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for today. Uh, thank you very much, Enoch, for coming Thanks here for today me. to talk to us about Rwanda. But as I mentioned, time is against us. And uh, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for tonight. African Voices was presented by me, Baile Jalo, and my colleague here, Chiwe Chiana. Until next week, that was African Voices. Have a good night.